Hey y'all, it's Cindy Toucher with Around the Town in the South, and I'm here today with Phyllis Hurley, who I have known for, I don't even want to count how many years, because <laughs> it might make me feel a little depressed about how old I've gotten, but she was the administrator at Mount Salis Christian School when my children went there, and um, so I've known her since my kids were little, and of course, anybody who takes care of your kids, you know, or is always near and dear to your heart, so... <laughs> bless her <laughs> she's she's been through almost as much as I have with them so anyway but Phyllis is doing the neatest thing um, how 12 years I think you said she's um, started a um, ministry called friends of Uganda so tell us how you got started with this okay I got involved in a clean water project um, for Uganda and some of the team went to Uganda I did not go but through that, I connected with a lady named Teopista. And Teopista was a widow. She still is a widow. She had three small children, lived in one rented room with a crazy landlord who tried to get in at night. And she tried to make a living selling beets. Her husband had started a house, but then he was killed, so it hadn't been finished. Um, this is Teopista with with beads hanging in front oh, of yeah. her. Oh, yeah. And she made the beads? Oh, yes. Uh, we've got yeah. a lot and of I um, reflection here. I have a little picture yeah, you can of, see. of how they make them, if anyone's interested. Oh, but that's neat. What they, do they make them out of? Uh, magazine paper. They cut long, triangular oh, strips. Neat. Yeah, like strips of magazine needle, paper. Then they hang them up to dry, and they shellac them. Oh, wow. And so we've got some of the beads. Yes. Like, do. aren't these pretty? They're so colorful and so many different shapes. And you can and got, see the there's writing. bracelets. Look. Yeah. Well, now that you say that, I didn't know that. I didn't look at it. I didn't look at it as close yeah. before when I put it on. But yes, that is so neat. But all the different shapes and colors. And then there's, there's earrings, bracelets, necklaces. Mm -hmm. So that's how it got started with the beads. <laughs> Yeah, and she sent us some beads, and some friends and I got together and wondered what to do. Then we discovered Greater Bellhaven Market, so we started selling beads there, and she sent me crafts that her friends were making. Mm -hmm. So that's how we managed to get such a wide variety of things to sell. And so her and her friends are making things in Uganda, mm -hmm. and shipping them to you, yes. you're selling them, and sending her the money. Well, no. Or sending the money to? We're fair trade, so okay. we send the money first. We, oh, okay, okay. We buy the stuff, then it's our responsibility to sell it, and that's very motivational. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and in the early days, well, we graduated from Greater Bellhaven to, well, we've done Mistletoe, we did Junior League in Austin a couple of years, we did... Oh, wow. Um, Essence in New Orleans quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Those are big shows. Those are big shows. And so now you have a booth at... Um, well, it's right here at the yeah. storehouse. The storehouse. We were at and Fair the storehouse Trade, is in Ridgeland <laughs> behind Repeat Street. Yeah. And it's a cute little, cute little shop it's got where you can <laughs> rent. You know, different people have different little booths. And so she has a booth here. So... Um, so I want to show some of the things that we have um, here. This real big right now, the sundresses, which I'm looking how cute the sundress is that they've made, and um, and then also these hats. Now tell us about the hats. They're made. These are made out of bark cloth, which comes from the bark cloth tree, and it feels like something you've never felt before. In the early days. This is what they use for clothes, and the more bark cloth trees you have, the wealthier it you are. feels work. like leather. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it kind of, and I'm sure it performs yeah, like that can, as far as the... You can crunch it up and... Great for travel. Yeah. <laughs> and gardening. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking you just shove that in your suitcase. Yeah. And, of course, there's head wraps that are gorgeous prints. I love these. Do they dye their own fabrics? Or how I, do they yeah. do this? I will say yes. Yeah. And then this is one of my favorites. This is something that um, Phyllis gave 
um, when Emily had, had, you know, my grandchildren when she was pregnant, this is something she gave her. It's, I always called these church purses because you could take them into church and play with oh, them and cool. not make any noise. And so it, this is a Noah's Ark, and it's got the little animals that you can put in here. Yeah. And, I mean, very detailed. Church but I love purses. these. cute. I know, <laughs> because, <laughs> of course, then I had a boy, well, my grandsons, um, I, and I thought, oh, that's kind of weird to call it a purse if it's a boy, but, but that's what I always called them, a little church purse, because, you know, they can play with it quietly in the pew and um, not interrupt everybody else who's paying attention. Um, there's, look how precious this is. This doll, and, and the doll has a baby. It's just a baby <laughs> on her back. How cute, and necklace, my goodness. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And, and then I'm going to show you one other thing that I absolutely love. Now. If I can get it without knocking everything over. <laughs> Isn't this gorgeous? It's the Last Supper. And we can push down right here. No. And, it's t and it, tell me about this. Do they... Um, well, it was painted in Uganda. It's a black Last Supper. And it, oh, it's a batik. Uh, oh, a batik, it's a yeah. Batik. And we have it shrunk wrapped here so you could actually just stand it up somewhere. Or you could get it framed. And this is have, beautiful. We have about five different backgrounds. So if anybody is interested, we have a variety of backgrounds. This is so pretty, though. I know. And, I mean, there's just so many things here. So I would encourage anybody to go to their Facebook page. They have a Facebook page, Friends of Uganda. Um, I've also got Phyllis's... Um, email address so if you wanted to talk to her tell us about some of the things that the money is used for though as far as what they do with the money because it's not just to I mean I was thinking before I talked to you more in depth about this that they were just using this to you know to eat you know and for their basic expenses but there's so much more that's going on with this money yeah that well eating is a large part yeah <laughs> eating is important but after um but and putting their kids in school, which yes. school is not free in Uganda. And we've actually started trying to adopt 13 kids this year to put them in school. School only costs about 600 a year, which is not bad by U.S. standards, but they just don't have the money. Yeah, I'm sure that's a lot, a yeah, lot more over there. Uh, and, and so, yeah, so they have schools, and this was a little... Um, oh, this is the orphanage. We've also worked with an orphanage. and. It's, it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's called Rural Mama Children's Home. And it's called Rural because it is in the middle of nowhere. Mama because they want them to have an idea of a mama. Uh -huh. Children. And then home. They wanted to have an idea of a home. Oh. Which I think is really sweet. It is. And it is. I guess we got connected with them about 10 years ago. And first we provided mattresses because they were just sleeping on banana fiber on the floor. And oh my gosh. We provided Our babies. clothing. We've learned that sending money works better than trying to send the actual clothes because mm -hmm. it's too expensive and they get stolen at customs lots of times. Oh, okay. And so, okay, so you do, so you help with the orphanage, you help with the, and, and the schools, she was showing me a picture of the school. Yeah, this is their current school. Those are. Up. Yeah, I'll bamboo slats. This is the wall to the school. It's connect. just bamboo. <laughs> yeah, there's that's it's not um I mean, it's just a little yeah, it's not too good. And we're trying to help them raise money to actually build a school. And some of the kids walk 4 miles to get to a school mm -hmm. over rocky ground and we try to provide shoes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. But okay. this is the current yeah, thing. At, a little yeah. while ago, we helped raise a, money for a new dormitory because the officials had said um, they would shut them down because the boys and girls were in different rooms but in the same building. Uh -huh. So they were going to shut them down. Like, yeah. yeah. So we raised money and built a beautiful new dorm for the girls. And now we're trying to raise money for a schoolhouse. Well, that's just so neat. And you know what? I mean, what I'm just so impressed with is that you don't have to be, like, you can be sitting here in Mississippi and help people <laughs> on the other side of the world, you literally. Sure and and so I appreciate so much that you just have a heart for this and that you, oh, you, you. followed the leading to do this and to, to 
trying to help these people. And, and that's what, you know, we, Cindy and I always talk about what we love about doing these stories is we see how people are giving back and people are, you know, that's, uh, and, and of course I, I claim that it's the South, but I'm sure it's people everywhere, but there's so many people with big hearts and good hearts and they're so giving. And so I just think it's just important to know about these things that how people are giving back and what they're doing. So I would just encourage you to get over here and come look at um, the Friends of Uganda booth. And, um, and if you ever, you know, look at their um, Friends of Uganda Facebook page. If you see things on there you like, email her and let her know because she can get them to you. And if, if you just feel the calling, and want to give financially, I'm sure that is much appreciated too. <laughs> that is much and appreciated. And so we just want to, you know, and, and, and also prayers. So yes. to keep them in your prayers, yes. to keep, you know, letting us, I mean, this is these people on the other side of the world and they're, they're you know, they're being loved by people here in Mississippi. And yes. so. Well, thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> yes, yes. And I want to thank my sponsors for um, letting me do this today. Huntcliffe Veterinary Clinic in Clinton, Mississippi. And that's where I take my little fur babies. I've got two cats and two dogs, and they have um, always taken very good care of them, Dr. Walker and Dr. Stribling. We love them at Huntcliffe Veterinary Clinic. Um, also, Odom's Eye Care. Um, I, there's a lot of, did you know that like just looking at your eyes, you can see things like diabetes and all kinds of things that they can tell all kinds of things about your health. No. just through your eyes <laughs> and so a lot of people think I don't need to go to the eye doctor because I see perfectly fine but there's so much else that they can tell about your overall health through just an eye examination so it's so important to make that a part of your regular health care so I just love them at Odom's Eye Care they're off of Old Canton Road in Jackson Mississippi and I also want to thank my last sponsor Cheney Day Parade Photography Carrie Cheney is so talented we actually have, um, she's going to be taking my grandchildren's portraits um, coming up soon. And um, she's, she takes the cutest pictures and great headshots. And so I've got her information there too. So look her up. And just thank you again so much. Well, thank for you. For being here. For and it's, me. Get to reconnect a little me. bit. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> I know, I know. And y'all come look at this cute stuff and get you, get you a sundress or summer hat. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we'll be seeing you around the town.